All right, guys, welcome back to my channel. Thank you for joining me and my good friend, Melissa. Hi. This is, this is the homie. There's only a few of us, and she's part <laughs> of the clique, okay, the crew. Yeah. Um, so today, we're going to another girl talk. We're going to talk about a lot. A lot, a lot. A we lot, have, a lot. A lot, yeah. <laughs> a lot, a lot, right? Um, so today, what are we having? We are having French toast. Because I asked Melissa, what do you want to eat, right? <laughs> she going to say, the Moroccan rice that you made, that salad and that, that lamb. I was like, wait, hold on, time out. Listen, first Not of all, this Saturday. you have to explain. I am Haitian, so we brunch... We don't know brunch. Brunch is <laughs> mini dinner. Exactly. Like Africans. Africans be eating for, for, for exactly. breakfast. I'm like, wait, chill out. And we I saw, eat little things of rice. I said, I got you. I got you <laughs> next time. But not this uh, Sunday. So I said, what else do you want? Like a brunch kind of situation. She says, French toast. So we made French toast. I made it a little different. I used buttermilk instead of regular whole milk. And I think it's going to taste really good. It's going to taste really good. Yeah. <laughs> so it's going to French toast, turkey bacon. Uh, I don't know what they call the sunny side. No, it's not sunny side up. I don't. I this think it's like fried. My Fried medium, right? Hmm? I think so. The eggs. Let us this know is the eggs. <laughs> <laughs> eggs. Okay, and Mel love libations, so we got sangria. Yeah. Okay, I didn't use Merlot. I use um, Pinot Noir and a mix of Cabernet Sauvignon. Okay. 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 <laughs> Listen, this is Chef B right here. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> And then some fruits, because, you know, we try to make ourselves feel yeah, healthy you know, after having the sangria. So. Even though it's not on our plate, but, you know, it's okay. <laughs> so what? We're so, going to dig in. Because I'm hungry. I, I am hungry. Okay. And this looks too good. I'm glad you came in. Do you like when your, um, your uh, what you want call it? Your syrup touch? Your, your yeah. eggs? Oh, the eggs. Yeah. I mean, I never had that happen, but, you know. I never had an issue with it until, like, Damon and his sister, like, they put it on their they hate eggs. It. Oh, I feel like start disliking it since mm. you're talking about it. It's good. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is up. I don't know if we're gonna be talking that much. <laughs> <laughs> this is so good. Mm. Yeah. Shout we're gonna out to, start. Shout out to the chef. Thank you. Thank you. We're gonna start, but hold on. You know what's a, yo, you know what's a, to make a really good um, French toast? Using brioche, brioche bread. Oh, because um, it's thicker. It's thicker. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're going to start soon, y'all. Just hold on. Do you like your eggs runny? I do. I like sunny Thank side. You. I like sunny side up. Like if I make some avocado toast, just like fry it a little bit. It's a little bit. It's good. Yeah, yeah it's good. I think one time, <laughs> excuse me. I made it for Damon. Mm -hmm. And it was a, it was a little, just, not even running, just a little, okay? <laughs> it's a sprint. It was sprinting. It wasn't even, it was jogging. <laughs> okay? That man threw up. Really? It's an acquired taste. Like, if you're not, if you're not used to it, you're not going to like it. But once you get used to it, the more accustomed you get to it, it's good. You know? Yeah, I, I always like it, but... I guess that's the same way how people feel about um, medium rare, rare medium. That too. Like, like for me, I know I had to, like I'm a well done girly. Okay. okay. Like I said, I am Haitian. <laughs> uh, but I kind of like lowered down as I have ate. So I'll be like, okay, medium well. Mm -hmm. And you go, medium. I'm not going rare though. Like, I, I think my, my, just my, my just cap bite. is medium. Hey, you might as well just catch it and just bite in. Yeah, like, I think my cap is medium. I heard the I purpose of them do doing that is because a lot of time when you make um, steak and stuff like that, it becomes dry. When they cook it regular, like normal? But rare, it's too dry. It's not as moist. I say, no, as you've had my beef on my yeah, steak. Yeah, When I cook it, when you use it, I have to use the right pot. Yeah. When I use my Le Creuset or any type of cast iron pot, because it retains heat so well, mm -hmm. and the steam collects and goes back into the meat or whatever mm -hmm. you're cooking, mm -hmm. it still retains that moisture without it having to be rare. Yeah. Or b bloody. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I feel like if you have the right equipment, you could get your moist, moist super, moisture, super moist, yeah. Yeah. Um, juicy beef that you're looking for. You know? Yeah, but it's, it's all a matter of preference. Me... Like I said, medium is my cap. <laughs> yeah. 
After that, I'm like, I'm good. <laughs> I feel like I've had medium before. I've had medium in the past before. Um, I was a little confused at first. I didn't mm-hmm. know what it meant. I'm a medium. I'm a medium. Well, cook my food. What do you mean medium? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, cook it. Did you like medium? Like well done? Because like, uh, well I was well, every time I cooked, it was always well done. So when I went to a restaurant and finally first my order steak, because I never really order steak from the restaurants like that. Because one is overpriced. Mm-hmm. Two is always like I could do this better. Because <laughs> <laughs> right? I never really boil it. Mm-hmm. So the first time I got him, I had medium. I'm like, what do you mean medium? He asked me if I want steak. I say yes. So me medium or rare? So you only thought it was one my temperature, food. right? Look yeah. at my food. You talking about medium? You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, oh. Yeah. But I like Walker. Mm. But at restaurants, I'll do medium. Okay, that's good. That's good? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, libations. <laughs> 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 yeah, so today, I'm going to take a break from the meat fat, right? <laughs> I know, right? I'm like, no, my, my plate is almost done. Be a savage. Okay. <laughs> Y'all, we we straight up fools. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm like, let me behave. But we, no, we why? Straight up fools. Said, savage. Yeah, I am. Just a little bit. Just a tinge. Um, no. So today I want to talk about because we both both of us worked in the industry. I want to talk about life in fashion. And it's fashion week too. So it's, oh, very appropriate. Timing. Okay, <laughs> perfect timing. To me, fashion isn't really like you have to get something super expensive mm-hmm. and wear it because I'm like, if they if it was that, then why do we have worse dress lists? These celebrities who wear like all these millions true. of dollars, and I'm like, but they end up on a worse dress list. You have to have that kind of inner confidence in you right. to carry an outfit. And I think a lot of people just are like, no, I'm just gonna wear Balenciaga right. and Givenchy and mm-hmm. like Hermes and Saint Laurent, and it's like, no, you could wear like. Conway. <laughs> Shout out to Conway. The yo. girl is talking. Listen, Conway walks so everybody else could fly, okay? <laughs> Listen. Yo. Shout out to Conway. Dr. Well, there's a rainbow. Thank you. Thank you. I'm dying. <laughs> you got to drink some water for that. <laughs> rainbow didn't like that. I said that. <laughs> but no, before there was a rainbow... There was Conway. There was a Conway. Before there was a Dr. J. There was Con- Conway. It was right on full team. Remember that? Yes, with the with the gated Same. floors. Listen, I'm taking Yo. it back. <laughs> Yo. But you know what it is? I don't know if you remember back back in high school, we had this word called, I'm not trying to age myself. I'm not that old. I really don't care. <laughs> but we had this word called jigged out. Jigged out? So, yo, you jigged out. I ain't never heard that So, word, all right. Okay. So, all right. And we the same All place. right. Calm down. <laughs> So it, basically being jigged out is like, so you have somebody that, so either you was fly, which means you were stylish, mm-hmm. or you was jigged out, meaning Balenciaga. Oh, like the brand. You just branded up. Okay. So it's, oh, you jigged out, mm-hmm. right? So if somebody say you're fly, that's a compliment because you just stylish. Yeah. You jigged out, so okay, you're wearing a bunch of designers. Cool, you got money, whatever. So, but one thing I realized, a lot of people are just jigged out. Yeah. And not a lot of people are fly. Yeah. Because a lot of people think that, oh, because, because I'm wearing all these designers now, boom, I'm stylish. No, baby girl. Mm-hmm. You can wear a bunch of designers and don't know how to put it together and you're looking like, why? Yeah. It happens you know all the time. You all see the it time. all the time. And like even working <laughs> in the industry with the actual designers, I'm like, they're not coming in with like thousands of dollars on. Like they might have like a purse that's, you know, 10 racks of like, Mm -hmm. you know, shoes that are high end. But for the most part, you see them in the street. They look just like everybody else. And like when it's, when it comes down to it, like for a fashion show, for like a press event or like an interview, of course they're going to like dress up. They're not going to be like coming out looking like they rolled out of bed. Yeah. But um, yeah, it's just a matter of how you put your stuff together, how you carry the outfit. Right. Um, Tailoring is a big (laughs) big yo big yo. part of it like especially it. especially for men like i i so i did menswear for a little bit yeah, tell me a little bit what you do <clears throat> okay so 
For now, I work in customer service for a fashion brand. Um, like we do like a lot of web um, orders and like wholesale. Mm -hmm. But outside of that, I did study fashion. I studied fashion design um, at Fashion Industries mm -hmm. and Fashion Institute High School College. And I did menswear for like about a year and I didn't like it at first. Cause like mm -hmm. menswear now and menswear when I was doing it was like two different things. Like now, now men are way more open to like textures and patterns the main thing that i learned in menswear is studying menswear that tailoring has to be perfect yeah you know and like when i see a guy especially like tall guys or like brolic guys you know like they have to go a little more further in tailoring and spending money for tailoring and i try not to be judgmental because sometimes i be seeing guys i'm like okay the hemline is a little too high a little too low you know <laughs> no no you know, the poor babies you know, don't know they, they don't know you fashion, know like fashion it's not modest at all let's keep it real it's not modest at all like you can't you know really what? find a lot of stuff even for children like i have nieces and nephews my sisters they're always trying to look for stuff for my niece or my nephews it's very like what the hell's going on <laughs> you it's know like, come on. like it's very like what's the what the hell's going on but it's like but there are some christian girls or some christian women they're like yo i i like this but i still want to feel comfortable and still like i'm being appropriate right, right you know and so it's like how do you tie that so you have to run parallel with the world like okay like i see what they're doing but I'm let me different. put my spin on it yeah. and i have jesus <laughs> Who created Got nothing but spins. everything? Okay. okay, I told you in, in Genesis, he made the first. He was Balenciaga before he created Balenciaga. That's what you're okay, okay, somebody else. Yeah, that's bleep, you. bleep it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> mm. But he he created like all these trends and all these things. Like oh, you know, I got a full leather outfit on. Adam and Eve got it for free. Well, it wasn't really, it wasn't really free. Cause well, at the sin, Cause sin happened. Cause yeah. now we here. Yeah, having to work. I know. Seven days having, a week. Okay, we the people outside. <laughs> All right. So no, that that is a good point because fashion is so not modest. Mm -hmm. It's tiring. I'm yeah. so tired of seeing people with booty cheeks. Yeah. I'm not gonna hold you. The cheeks. I am tired of seeing the cheeks, bro. The pennies and the lace. This is come on. The thongs are out. It's like, like come there's on. no and and oh, then and geez. then when you tie it back to like relationships, like being in relationships with like a with people, it's like there's no kind of like surprise to it. Cause no. everything is out oh, of the you open. Saw your boobs. You yeah. Saw your <laughs> So it's like, what what kind of mystery and surprise and suspense and like right. excitement is there if you just have everything out in the open? Like I've seen some, I'm not, I've seen some believers mm -hmm. who, let me not do the quotes, take that down. I've seen some <laughs> believers dressed and they have the lace top and I see your nipples and I'm just like, so if, G, I would say, so if Jesus was to come here right now, <laughs> today and saw your titi, would he be happy? Yeah. Would he like? Would he be satisfied? Look, like, well, well done, my good and faithful servant. Yeah. Would he say that? I think sometimes that's what I be thinking about. And I remember, Pastor Delina was it Pastor Delina? When the pastor said this before, like, if you don't have peace about it, yeah. you endure it. Yeah. So if you're putting on a piece of clothing and you going back and forth, hey, is this too short? Mm -hmm. Is this too long? Maybe you shouldn't wear it because yeah. you asking yourself that question already. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So like, I love modest dressing, and I feel like that's why. I enjoy what I do in terms of like creating content when it comes to fashion because I kind of want to show not kind of I want to show people that you could still be very stylish mm -hmm. dope fit and be covered yeah you get what I'm saying I'm not yeah. saying dress like a nun but like yeah you don't have to wear like a like a whole veil and no all this. but and, he, and even that's in style actually to wear like the little scarf oh yeah you know, like the okay. little Whitney Houston bodyguard but <laughs> But no, like, and if you feel comfortable, like, I'm not saying you can't be sexy, like, you know, but there's mm -hmm. certain ways that you could be sexy, but be subtle about it. Right. You right. know, like, you could be subtle. Like, you could be like, oh, you know, show a little this, show mm -hmm. a little that, but you gotta show everything. Like, you know one experience I had? <laughs> I was in church, right? It was a we was middle service, and I had to off the show. I know it might be, it's not a big deal for some people, but I was surprised I was getting checked on about this oh off the shoulder off the mm -hmm. shoulder that shirt. happened to me too yeah yeah i think we talked about it off the shoulder shirt quiet singing i'm just like oh cool 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 and i just start feeling uncomfortable i'm just like nobody's looking at me weird nobody was looking at me like oh my gosh no no one 
But in turn, I'm just start feeling uncomfortable. Mind you, I left the house, went to church. I was saying I felt uncomfortable. I'm like, am I feeling uncomfortable with all shit off the shoulder? Yeah. I said, God, what's wrong with the off the shoulder? It's just a shoulder. Like, somebody going nut over a shoulder? That's weird. <laughs> like, what the heck? <laughs> Sorry about being real. Right? And then he was like, no. Think about when you're taking clothes off. You start off the shoulder. Mm-hmm. You start off the, and the, the shoulder comes out. He's like, you're given an image mm-hmm. of a sexual activity that's about to happen. Mm-hmm. And you don't know who's struggling. Not that you're responsible for everybody's struggle or, or, trigger. or triggers mm-hmm. or being sanctified. That's not your job. But why cause your brother or sister to stumble? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So when God told me that, I was just like, oh. Because I didn't think much of about off the shoulder. Yeah. When he gave me that vision and that analogy and that like, no, no, no. This is what, off the sh- your shoulder, there's nothing wrong with your shoulder, but it is the image that it is creating yeah. in somebody who struggles mind. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Especially you in the church. You don't know who's struggling with that. So I was just like, oh, I don't think. Yeah, and that was the lesson for me. You get what I'm saying? So now you could access anything at the tip of your me. fingers. It okay. It, it, and it doesn't even have to be like, like, you know, some certain type of website. It could be Instagram. Yeah. It could be TikTok. It could be yeah. Twitter. Like you could access anything just like it's that. It's so scary. And, yeah, it is very yeah, me scary. Me and they were just talking about in pornography. Because he had made a comment about under a film page about pretending that people are coming from this again disrespectful about Jesus and faith, whatever. Mm-hmm. And it's just like how easily accessible pornography is Very. in this day and age. Yeah. And like even those who don't believe are talking about how horrible pornography is mm-hmm. for your mind. And that's what I love about it too, because I, I think the love what about what what no 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 about like how now <laughs> people outside of the church yeah. are also saying See, like, how bad it is yeah. like for your mind and how like it just basically it rewires you your brain right it really it does. rewires your brain like how you see people how you view yourself right. like everything is just out of whack and yeah. so many men struggle with it so it's just like and women and women yeah, yes like, yes, everyone's yes like oh it's a Come bad thing no, no, like, and, women, and women and Christians and Christians alright okay. man like <laughs> keep it a buck masturbation yeah. be a struggle for a lot of people yeah yeah. Okay, so it's, it's not, but you're right. Like in terms of them, t- us talking about it in church, we don't talk about because one, people are uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. Two, people don't know how to, to approach it. Three, I think because it's been so perverted by the world, we don't know which angle to go in from because we don't even know what a healthy one look like because mm-hmm. it's been so perverted. And like you said, it is an uncom- uncomfortable topic, but it doesn't have to be, yeah, and it, it's it's uncomfortable because it's foreign, um, not in terms of like it's happening everywhere but in terms of like like you said you don't know how to approach it like some people are like oh you know it's like, been perverted for so long about. And, like, and like when we growing up it's like okay don't have sex and it's like okay but, but why you, but that's the point <laughs> don't, t- don't have sex and then you'd be like where are my grandkids well yeah, you know yeah like I'm like well this is how it works growing up in biology they told me that right. I have to have sex, sex to have to happen. Happen. <laughs> you know like what are we talking so, about but, here but it, it's just like a, a in terms of like like you said, one, like a healthy conversation. First of all, unhealthy conversations, which is just like porn is basically taking everybody and their mama out, you know? It's mama <laughs> whether, the mama. Whether, whether you're in the daddy. church, yeah, daddy, everybody, aunties, beans, beans, potatoes, tomatoes, all that good stuff, <laughs> okay? Like, it's taking people out. So you have to deal with, like, one, that that perverted kind of way of, of, of sex and how it's, like, viewed, because... Let's keep it real too. Some people, their first experience with sex has been porn. So, and and that's something or that's or molestation or rape or, or molestation or rape. So, like all that ter- and like goes under the like perverted ways of it, and then teach healthy ways of doing it, healthy yeah. ways of approaching it. Like, and I I'm a very big advocate. Like, it might sound controversial, but even when you're dating, like if you're in a serious relationship with someone, I think that's a conversation that has to have had to be mm-hmm. had too. Like. Mm-hmm. So it's like, how do you navigate that? How do you bring that up, basically? Yeah. So it's like, if I can't, if my local community of my church can't bring it up, like, how am I going to then bring right. it up when I'm in a relationship with somebody? Right. Or right. like, who's, you have no... who's gonna hold me accountable to it if I don't see you having conversations about it? So I'm like, do you really know mm. what you're talking about? Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, so now you're gonna hold me accountable to something you don't even know about or yeah. uncomfortable talking about. So it, it's so many layers to it. Yeah. You know. yeah. So speaking about <laughs> sex. Mm-hmm. I didn't think we was going to talk about sex. I, I didn't think because we this was maybe... It maybe it's a libation. <laughs> but speaking about sex. Mm-hmm. 
How is the dating oh. world? I, sw- I spoke to Stephanie about it last week, and she gave me. I feel like we need a part two to that one. And she gave me maybe her, we could have like a, a, a trio, right? Yeah. Because <laughs> I've heard. Mm-hmm. I don't want to be negative. <laughs> Just be real. Um, take a sip of this. <laughs> it's trash. Mm. It can be trash. And but I think it's a lot. You have to dig through a lot of trash. Mm-hmm. To finally find like someone decent, but even with that too, like sometimes they could just be weird. Yo, I keep like, hearing them. Like, what's I, up with that? I, and I'm gonna talk from the context. Like, I know everyone who probably watches this video, they're not probably not gonna be. Everyone's not gonna be Christian, but I could speak from the context of being a Christian because I am Christian, mm-hmm. a Christian, and um, yeah, like I just think like sometimes. Like, guys, or women, too. I'm not going to just say guys, but women, too. Like, we just don't really know how to navigate dating without being strange. (laughs) Like, in terms of, like, interaction, in terms of, like, conversation. Mm -hmm. Like, like me, like, that conversation with sex, like, if I spoke to a Christian guy about it, he'll probably be very uncomfortable, which is not his fault, because, like I said, we don't talk about it. But at the same time, it's like, like, who, who... I guess you could say in your group of friends, like, are you not talking about uncomfortable conversations? So it's like now that you're approaching me and you're just being strange about stuff or like you don't want to bring certain stuff up or like just, and then you have the other extreme where it's like, like Steph said, like you have to vet, like, are you real? You have a relationship with Jesus. Right. So like, yo, I believe in God. It's like, a high Jesus, being. yeah, like a high being, like the, I'm like, no, Jesus Christ died on the cross. Yes, rose Yeshua. After three days. Yes, Emmanuel, him. Na- the nails and the, f- like that Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> like, doubting Thomas looked at the, yeah, yeah, all of that. Right. And it's like, yeah, I believe in God. It's like, I, Sad. I, I'm great. That's great, guys. <laughs> but Jesus, Jesus Christ, you know. Do you believe in him? Right. Yeah, do you believe in him? And, and I just think it's like a lot of like, you just have to vet and just use your discernment a lot because like if you end up being serious with this person it's in the long run that's like a very big decision right so right. um yeah and people could be very deceiving you know yeah. men and women alike like i said i'm not gonna just be like oh man they ain't nothing and all that. like yeah, no so um, this me- yeah, yeah like men and women um and but yeah it, it's it's interesting. It's very interesting. And and then social you feel media like, does not help. Yeah. <laughs> do you think social media? That's what I was thinking. So do you think social media has messed up humans in terms of social? Absolutely. I feel like because it's people, not really social. Because people don't know. I like feel like people don't know really how to talk. Social. I mean, yeah. And then COVID just added another. I mean, layer look. To how long you keep blaming COVID? No, 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 no. I'm not blaming COVID. I'm just saying it just added. It's like. Another one one okay. is social media and then one A is COVID, you know? Okay. Like, a lot of people's social skills kind of, like, got out of whack. Um, but just, like, social media, it's just ex- expectations. Like, oh, this girl got to look like this. This guy got to look like this. Yeah. And he has to do this. And, and, you know, like, what you mean you're not paying for this on the first date? Like, and not to say that you don't pay for the first date, guys. Mm-hmm. Guys, pay for the first date. But, like... <laughs> Women are like, oh, well, you got to pay for my nails and my hair and this. And I'm like... You looking for a sugar daddy? Yeah. Go find him. I'm like, not her. I Only have him. a job. <laughs> like, I have I have income, okay? Right. Like, I could do this myself. And, and so, yeah, like, social media kind of perpetuated that expectation. Like, everything has to look like this, and it got to be like this, and it got to be like this, and it got to be like this. And it's like, it's a whole lie, mm-hmm. you know? And it's like, you're... Like you, even the name, like social, like we're not being social. <laughs> Do you think that, I feel like, because I know a lot of people love to text. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm a, a texter. texter. I'm sorry. Those who know me know, like if I I've know. not responded to text <laughs> I, message from like friend that. I'll be two like, months ago, me like... <laughs> it's not, don't take it personal. It's just not my thing. Yeah. I'm the type where, call me, mm-hmm. let's talk. FaceTime. FaceTime me, yeah. let's talk. And we don't even have to talk for another month. Mm-hmm. I'm okay with that. I'm not offended. I'm okay. Because mm-hmm. next time we talk, 
we gonna catch up all of you know what I'm saying like yeah. do you think that I mean, we do that in real life <laughs> right do you think that I guess we're gonna text there's a couple people have to text okay <laughs> not the light bulb <laughs> <laughs> do you think that in addition to social media and mm-hmm. don't compare ourselves with it consciously or subconsciously, do you think that the fact that we don't actually verbally mm. speak, whether on the phone or in person, and everything's text and words via our fingers, do you think that that also affected people's social skills? Um, yeah, like, because with text messages, right? Like, I'm a texter. Mm-hmm. Like, I'd rather text or mm-hmm. like, now my phone call is the um, audio messages. I love those. Oh, I love those too. Cause I'm like, it. I can't text all this way. Yeah, I love it. Um, but but well, do you do your audio like you give the same energy just in case like if it was recorded and you realize it didn't record, so you have to do it again. Do you I give do. the same energy. Yeah. Right, I thought it was only. I, go ahead. <laughs> oh, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it, like communicate communication in general is just it just sucks. Like yeah. I'm, I'm just gonna keep it a buck. Like niggas don't know how to communicate. <laughs> so <laughs> one minute they're texting you, texting, texting, and then you just don't hear from them. They go ghost, and then like a month later, hey, how you a doing? A whole month. I was gonna say a week. It, no, girl, I have one right now. But <laughs> and I'm like, sir, all right. But like, Heard it, you. yeah, like, I, cause I'm like, you have to be. Like, I hate using this word because I feel like it gets thrown around a lot, but intentional about stuff. And, like, so if you're, like, one month you text him, we're fine, and then the next month is dead silent. And then you come back, hey, what's up, big head? And it's like... <laughs> hey, big head. <laughs> I'm like, goodbye, big yeah. head. You know? <laughs> like, don't try to text me nothing. Right. And, but, like, that's how, like you said, it's just access like okay she don't want to talk to me next one on to the next girl this nigga don't want to talk to me on to the next nigga and it's like like what happens with that <laughs> it's, it's a lot girl you you so lucky you out the game girl girl god help us <laughs> god help us thank I'm not you gonna jesus for damon because he took you out the game girl <laughs> I, I took him out the game too girl <laughs> yeah you took him out the I game heard, i heard about these girls Ooh, out here these girls they love I heard, listen it's just it's not a one-way street <laughs> you know that whole Male, female, four. Mm-hmm. There's a. I talk about and it's so a, it's so annoying. Really, it's, it's just so like come annoying. on, men are against the yeah. women, the women are against the men. It's just like and then like this whole uh, thing, like oh, if a woman you agree with a, what a man is saying, then you will pick me, and I'm like a what a pick me. It's a pick me girl. Tell me, let me educate it. you. <laughs> <laughs> so like a pick me is basically like if you're you're basically agreeing with someone just because you want them to like pick you. So pick me. Mind blown. Yeah. So that's like another thing too, where it's like, okay, if I agree with them, like, oh, you just trying to get chose and all this stuff, and I'm like, no, he actually has a valid point. Like, so, I'm not even attracted so if to I this was, man. So if I was married, they would tell me I was a pick me. What you said? If I, if I was married, they would tell me I was a pick me. Probably. Wow. Yeah, yeah. It's it's like this whole battle between men and women. I'm it's like, so as much as like you know women are like i could do this on my own men are like i don't need this girl i have like a thousands of girls like you we need each other like that's how literally I'm how god, by not this is how literally how god created us you know yeah. like there's certain things that a man could carry that women we don't have there's certain things that women could carry that men do not have right so it's like we literally need each other and i think like it's just a whole divide and then you put gender stuff into it. And it's like, oh, yeah. wow, this video about to be four hours. But yeah. <laughs> like you put you put gender stuff, this whole gender thing in there, and it's like you're you're we're distort. The world is slowly distorting the design that Jesus has put in us, and it it's, it just sucks because I'm like, the there, there's so some real. people who actually like, yo, like I really want to love and respect a man i really want to lead this woman but it's just so much chatter and like oh and i think like that's so much and then podcast on top oh lord it's like what i tell you that's why i'm really listening to podcasts like people are talking 
too many people Everybody are talking. Talk. Too and, and, and it's such a, I know it's such an oxymoron. And it was such a wild statement to make when I'm doing a show like this. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? But yeah. to, as a believer, your advice should only come from the word of God. Yeah. Because if you listen to everybody that's talking, girl, you're going to be so you're confused. You're going to be so confused. Do you think life will be a little different in I, a different I, city I, honest, different country? Honestly, I think so. Yeah, like New York. It's such a hustle I city. I am a Brooklyn girl, born and raised. Brooklyn is my heart, but I will leave here in, in a heartbeat. heartbeat. Because, like, like you said, it's a hustle city. Everyone's just for themselves. Like, you know, it is what it is. But outside of New York, <laughs> yeah, it's a totally different conversation. Yeah. And granted, it might be that now a lot of New Yorkers are moving outside yeah. of New York, that now those other places are starting to have that kind of New York mentality. But yeah, I feel like living in New York, that's how it is. Like, yeah. no one's really focused on, like, settling down. And, and gra- there are people, obviously, hello, hello like, single. she's in New York and she's settled down. I have friends who are settled down in New York. But it's just the the environment of New York is not relationship-based. Yeah. It's money-based. Yeah. Like, I just got to make money. I just yeah. got to make money. I just got to conquer this. I just got to conquer that. I yeah. got to hustle and do this. I got to hustle and do that. And then, like, I got to enjoy life and I'm working. But, like, the weekends, I got to enjoy my life yeah. and all this stuff. So, it's, like, all these things. So, it's getting harder and harder to navigate and, and find someone that's, like, I really want to settle down mm-hmm. and be in a relationship and mm-hmm. do that. But, I, yeah, outside of New York, I feel like what 20 years old you married got two kids already right. <laughs> sometimes i feel like we tend to make a general big statement about certain things based on our experiences just here in new york or even here in america and just like no that's not the rest of the world yeah okay and yeah the older you get the harder it becomes even as a woman mm-hmm. you know i remember i saw a message where a man was calling another woman old and she had the nerve to basically to deny him or the nerve to like play him because she's old and nobody wants her mm-hmm. i was just like wow that's rude mm-hmm. okay but then a lot of these men know that they can be old and still get a chick yeah i mean that's that so they that's the goal they for get crazy people. yeah sometimes it's like you know these young girls they want someone in their 40s they want a father in their 50s they want a father. Yeah, they, they do. Like, because some of them didn't have that privilege of having a father, father in their so lives. So yeah, but even with that, that comes with strings attached to it. Mad strings. <laughs> you know, perfect. like, it, that Mad comes strings. with strings attached to it. Like, you, and you hear success stories. I'm not going to say, like, we can't make blanket statements because right. there's, there's some that I'm like, right. okay, like, there's a huge age difference, but he still loves her. He's, she still respects him, whatever. But I couldn't do it. I ain't gonna hold you. I mean, if I was so single, I couldn't. Yeah, I couldn't do it. I get, <laughs> I get it. I, I, I'm married. So if I know you're sometimes. older than me, okay. But like, how it, old? How a, old would you a go? Cap. Oh, what was your cap? Well, what is your cap? Um, probably like, like five to maybe eight. Maybe eight. My cap was four. <laughs> I was gonna say five, but I'm like maybe eight. five is like ooh, God really sent you. Yeah. But my cap was four. My that's cap it. is probably like eight, but that's ooh. like very, very loose. But when you're older, <laughs> it's not that bad. But me personally, mm-hmm. my cap is it not is was four. I'm yeah. You come into me, you I'm freaking thirty years old. You forty two. I'll be single. Yeah. So, what is the age, oldest you ever dated? The oldest I ever dated. Well, it wasn't eight years. It, I think he was like, how old is he? Like, like two years older than me. Okay. That's, yeah. I feel like when you're in your thirties and your forties, even if it's like eight year gap, is not that bad. Yeah, it doesn't feel. But like it's good. when you're in your twenties and you're dating somebody that's like, that's, let's say twenty three or twenty five, and you're dating somebody that's like thirty eight. This is like. Ugh. <laughs> that's more than 10 years that's nasty that's nasty work 
Right, Jackson? <laughs> that is but nasty it work. Work. That, I mean, I've seen it. It works for people. So I'm like, if you like it, I'm I love it. If you like it, I love it. I know. <laughs> Not even I mean, granted, like, my parents have a great, it's like 10 years maybe. Mm-hmm. Works for them. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I'm like to each his own. You live your exactly, life exactly. To live, each his right. Own. Live, I'm it's not judging you, but but I I just know for me, like if it's older, then I'm sorry, Jesus, you have to come down from that throne, <laughs> <laughs> come in my room, and be like, give me a new one, be like, hey, daughter, yeah, this this is him. Cause I'll be right. like, hey, okay, I guess it's giving Abraham. <laughs> 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 What if, but now what if, what if, what if, right? <laughs> what if he's older, but attractive and still looked young? Well, like Idris Elba, he's much older than his oh, wife. If it's Idris Elba, I'm like, girl, <laughs> I'm like, my limit has done. Idris <laughs> Elba, he's much older than his wife, right? She's yeah. young. She's like, she's my age. Yeah, she's in her early yeah. 30s, and he's much older. Mm-hmm. I like them together. Yeah, that, and that's what I'm saying. Like, if it it's, works for you. Baby. It works for you. If the Lord sent you, mm-hmm. it, it works for you. But, but the Lord knew my heart. <laughs> he knew my heart. But like in terms of like what you said, like if he, if he has a young sweet, because you you know me, B. Like I like to joke around. Yeah. I'm like very chill. Like so, if he has like a young, like mentality, mm-hmm. and he's fine, fine. Mm-hmm. Even a little bit of grace. Salt and pepper don't hurt nobody. <laughs> Salt and pepper adds a seasoning, okay? <laughs> I ain't mad at it. I am not mad. Listen, y'all. Like, y'all. like, I feel like a lot of people put periods to their standard, and they have to put a comma. Mm. There's Ooh, some. That's there, a word. You know, like that. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, there, there's some things that, obviously, they ha- it's strict. Like, you must love Jesus Christ. I believe in Jesus Christ. But there's some things too. It's like, okay, you have to make this amount of money. Or you just have to know how to budget. <laughs> like, because you make it, a lot of money with bad money habits. It, 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 it's feel like you have no money. Part, girl. <laughs> okay, like, you could have ball so hard, like, niggas yeah. in Paris, but you are poor. Yeah. Okay, you're in Paris and you're broke. So yeah. <laughs> I'd rather be in Paris. And and I could afford to be in Paris. Yeah, my mother was saying, it's not how much you make, it's how much you have left over. Thank right? you. Thank and you. Speaking of lists or standards, I'm about to talk to one of my coworkers. She had asked me, like, what was my list in terms of, you know, I was just like, what list? She's like, you know, the list. I'm just like, you're so obsessed with lists. And, yeah. I said, I and, and naturally so, like, especially for women, like, you always have, like, yeah, be this, be this. But my this. thing is, like, I don't really remember having a list. It was just... Oh, I had a list. I had, like, three things. <laughs> three major things. Love God. Mm-hmm. For real, for real, be a believer. Mm-hmm. Love Christ. And write the book. <laughs> Love Christ. Don't yeah. be a bum. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I don't need you to come in with, like, book money, but you have a plan. You have a work ethic. Yeah, you have a work yeah. ethic. You're not lazy. You got a plan. Mm-hmm. I think I'd probably say two, two right? Mm-hmm. And the reason, I think, when I was talking, I was like, I didn't have a list because God knows me more than I know me. Mm-hmm. And he's going to give me somebody yeah. that I need. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? And I feel like, is it possible sometimes we can have the long, not that you shouldn't have standards, do have your standards. Yeah, but is it possible we can have that long list and disqualify somebody that God met for you mm-hmm. because they didn't match your list? And God was like, but you don't even realize that you struggle with anger. Yeah. Like, you think you are good, but God said, but you struggle with anger. But I'm not angry. You are. So I'm giving you this person that <laughs> have a lot of patience. You you but you anger. disqualify him because his hairline mm-hmm. is off. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like, is it possible our list that we also create can put us in a hole yeah. or miss out on somebody mm-hmm. because they match our list? Absolutely. You know, so it's, it's like, <laughs> but the, the society always teaches, oh, have your list, have the list. But I'm just like, have like three, four things I, on your list yeah, and leave I, room for God to do Because I, I think... That's fine. Like, you have the standards that you want. You have some... Because, like, for me, I'm like, God, I have to be attracted to this person. Now, attraction, what I find attractive and what somebody else would find attractive is two different things. Yeah. So I'm not going to be like, oh, like, 
you know, they have to look, it's some co like cookie cutter thing of like attraction. Yeah. But like, I, I have, ultimately I have to sleep with this person. But, <laughs> so but, I'm like, I want to be attracted to this person. True, but, but have you ever experienced when somebody's ugly? Sorry. I mean, actually, I'm not sorry. Even the Bible called Leah ugly, all right? So <laughs> ugly is a <the> thing, right? <laughs> <laughs> this is biblical. <laughs> <laughs> Don't come for me. But have you ever experienced when somebody's ugly, mm -hmm. talking to them, but then your personality starts to show and Absolutely. you start finding them attractive? <laughs> there was a guy, right? <laughs> he... <laughs> he was not... He wasn't easy, easy on, on the, the eyes. Thank you, girl. <laughs> he wasn't easy on the eyes. He... And like people said that he wasn't easy on the eyes, but when I tell you this man was a good man, mm -hmm. he was a good man. He was funny. We used to joke around a lot. He was very respectful. Mm -hmm. You know, he like very chivalrous. He respected me. He respected my family. And um, but he wasn't easy on the eyes. He mm -hmm. wasn't, and and he knew that too, honestly. So he, it's not like. He was like, I look like Denzel. And it's like, no, you don't. Like, you know? <laughs> no, you like, don't. <laughs> like he knew he knew it, but he was very chivalrous. Like he, he said, I gotta make up for the lack of uh, well he made up, mm -hmm. you know, but um and but that's the thing, like what happened with that one. Oh yeah, he was he ended up being a hot mess though. Like he like life got to him. Yeah, life got to him. I felt really bad. But he's still a good guy. Mm -hmm. Just, you know, life beat his behind. Yeah. Um, but shout out to him, though. He don't know who he is. But, because <laughs> I didn't describe him. If I described him, he knew he would know. But, okay. yeah, like. I know him? No, you don't know him. Okay. You wouldn't know him. Yeah, but. <laughs> I'm trying to figure it out, right? I know him. <laughs> but, yeah, like, there's, there's men out there who, they're not easy on the eyes. But when you really get down to their personality, they're like, yo, you're pretty good. Like, then, this what makes you that, attractive. I've realized certain things because of person you start finding them attractive, and it's sometimes be the thing that you thought was ugly become all of a sudden. Oh, yeah, it's like, oh, you know yeah. what I'm trying to say. But the rest of the world are like, yo, why are you with that? And listen, there's ways to make you look better. You know, it doesn't work for everybody. It doesn't, but you know, it works for some people. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah, it, it's like there, cause, cause, okay, what about if you date an attractive man? It is a jerk. And they're a jerk or something happens to their face or something happens physically to them. So when you take that vow, you're stuck. I mean, some might disagree. I mean, yeah. But when but you take a vow before God, it, it, through thick and thin, illness, sickness mm -hmm. and health, that's part of it. Yeah, because I'm not saying that all men who you're not attracted to, they're just going to have the best personality. Like, they could be jerks too. Which I'm like, speaking of that, right? I'll be like, sir, you. I used to think you like, are setting yourself up for the jokes, man. Right. <laughs> like, speaking of that, I remember when I was younger, I used to think like every dude that was attractive was a devil because of how the Bible describes the devil being so beautiful. And I'm just like, you mad cute, bro? You from the devil? Get away from me, right? I'm with my cousin Baba. She'd be like, I like ugly niggas because they, they will never play you. That's a lie. That is These a lie. These ugly niggas are not feeling that themselves too. That is a too. lie. Yeah, like <laughs> she's just when she was younger. Yeah, she learned. But man, ugly niggas, short niggas. <laughs> Nigga, nigga, short. <laughs> <laughs> like short? The, the the five I'm... foot kings, mm, <laughs> they be five foot jokers, man. Okay, <laughs> so like they, they are kings, and there's the court of the king. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, like don't don't hold anything. But then you could be a five foot attractive king and a five foot attractive joker. Like it it all comes down to personality right. are you, your character are do you have integrity right do you know like budget oh i got one for you budget child oh budget is important to you go ahead keep, you keep talking budget. about it listen, i mean it is important go ahead. listen i'm not i will admit i'm not the best budgeter i try i do like the girl math budgeting it gives you what you need <laughs> I, you know I, you do lack. The, I do the girl math budgeting right. like oh i didn't buy lunch for the week let me buy this four thousand dollar lobster lunch on saturday because i didn't buy lunch for the week yeah and just spent you might as well have thank you exactly mm -hmm. so but i'm trying don't mm -hmm. i'm trying Got it. um but yeah like i'm very big on like a man who knows how to budget because i'm like if you know how to budget you can make 
a little amount of money, you can make a big amount of money. But at least I know we're good because money, listen, jobs come and go, financial situations arise. Changes. Once we have kids, like kids are expensive. I All my sisters are married and I know with childcare, my, some of my friends are married. Like I know with childcare, yeah. that is very expensive. $3,600 a month. Thank you. So I'm like, okay. I'm working to pay somebody, no. Yeah, so all this stuff, I'm like, are our kids going to be good? Are they going to have that example of budgeting through the head of the, the leader, the head of the household? You know, like that's a big thing that I'm you're big on, like big on. But this is even to add to what I said last week, mm-hmm. men. If you're watching this, and a lot of men don't understand this or don't even know this or might know, but women know how to handle your money. Is security for us. Yeah. Like I don't think because I've said it. Like men that. think yeah. that. Oh yeah, I could protect her. It's not just all about the physical. Mm-hmm. If you know how to spend, like if you know how to handle your money, we feel so secure. Like yeah. I, right, he got it. Because ain't that happen? My husband got it because he got mm-hmm. money in the bank. We exactly. got money in the bank. Exactly. You know what I'm and, saying? And even if we don't have money, he listen, gonna make it happen. He gonna make it happen because like, he don't knows drugs how- now. But he gonna make it happen. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want freaking. This ain't a big rich time. Right. We don't want no power or okay. like ghosts. But he's gonna make it happen. It's so but he he is, yeah. Like and and I, I think, think good. I think like when you say, oh, like when women say, I want a man with money. I want a man with money. I want a man no, with just money. To it. It's like okay, there's some women who just want like you gotta make six figures. I'm like okay, good Indeed. luck with that. Right. But like for me, I'm like. <laughs> Even if you you make six figures, praise the Lord, okay? If you don't thank make you, six, <laughs> thank, like thank you. I'm like, oh, that, you know, thank you, Jesus. A little extra, but, extra, yeah, extra, a little extra, extra, a little extra. But like, even if you make below that, like, how are you with your money? Are you do you have integrity with your money? Mm-hmm. How do you get your money? Right. How are you spending your money? Right. Like, you know, like if I want to go on a trip, if you want to go on a trip, we can go on a trip. If you don't want to go on a trip, okay. Mm-hmm. You know, like that yeah. is the biggest thing, and I and I think the blanket statement, like, oh, women just want us to be providers and just have all this that's money. That's your and job. It's like, well, yes, that is your that's job. That's your job. That's what you were created okay. to do. No shade, but you were created to be. You were created to be a cultivator and mm-hmm. the leader, and that is having money. We're not actually to have book money, mm-hmm. but having money to take care of your household. That's part of your job. That's and, like a and, woman expected yeah. to create a home for this fa- her family. That's yeah. part of our job. I'm like, cause okay, you want me to get this up. Apartment together, but we can't even get the apartment. We can't even cook. We stay <laughs> home. We can't keep money in the bank. Yeah, like, out got... but you don't want to learn how to cook. Yeah. But now my challenge for you is: mm-hmm. yes, you want the man to know how to budget. What are you doing to make sure that the money that the men make, you not spend at all? I'm not buying lunch for the week. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm getting my lobster on Saturday. <laughs> but, no, like, bro, because sometimes it's like we make, and I said this to a friend before in the past, where he said, I want a woman that do this, this, this. I'm like, well, what are you bringing to the table? Mm-hmm. And my my thought process was back then, before I got married or started dating, I was just like, well, if I want a dude to have all of these things, do I at least have two of those things on that mm. list? Or three or five or whatever. Yeah. I have a long list. Yeah. Do you have at least have five percent? Because sometimes you just have to meet the person to, you, to bring that out of you. Like, oh, I need to work on this. But we, but this, I guess, I'm saying we cannot be so prideful in what we are requesting, mm-hmm. and we can't even do half. Yeah. Of it. Like, how dare you? You yeah. know what I'm saying? So. My or if that person challenges us when we do get it, oh, you judging me. Like, only, right, God, right. only God could judge me. It's like, here we oh, go. Well, God here also we go. gave him the authority to call you out, too. Call you out, too. So yeah. it's like, because, like I said, this year, especially guys, really working with discipline, financial discipline. Mm-hmm. And it's like, yes, we want a man that have money and is not broke. Can we yeah. not? Because my mother always said, before infidelity, financial finance is what really breaks up a lot of marriages mm-hmm. right so we want all these things but at the same time have we stopped our habits have are we, do we have our bad habits in check so when the men do bring in the money it's not also leaving out the door the minute it comes exactly. and then we mad like oh you're broke no yeah. you're bro- he's broke because of you could i ask you something though mm-hmm. like, okay because i know you did counseling like premarital counseling mm-hmm. and some couples have done it before mm-hmm. like do you think that was uh 
I guess you could say brought up in premarital it as it should have been, like to the extent that it should have been. It got real bad. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, not gonna put people business out there, but it got real bad. Yeah. Uh, and you really see how, you really see. That's what I'm saying. I think marriages. I mean, finances really break up a lot of marriages because you really see how, because it's it's bad that it's like this, but money means security mm. for a lot of people. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? So it when it was brought up, you see how tight. The, how 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 much of a grip people have on their pockets like mm. you know it got real bad between some couples yeah. like oh i make more than you you don't make enough you mm-hmm. know like real disrespectful yeah you get what i'm saying so it was brought up but i think conversations needs to be had when you're dating somebody like hey these are my debts this is how much i make mm-hmm. depending on where you are in your dating mm-hmm. you know this is what it is. How do you feel about it? Because nobody likes... Su- I don't like surprises. <laughs> don't let me start going out with you or don't let me get married to you and tell me, oh, by the way, I owe yeah. the government $200,000. Yeah. Who is paying for that? But I have a question because I'm always like, when do you start bringing that up, though? Like, when you're, when know, you're dating. Like when- I know people on the first date they brought it up. <laughs> <laughs> okay? <laughs> like, Laying the foundation. Are you there. saying or not? No, don't waste my time. <laughs> Laying the foundation Damn. from scratch. Hey, look, man, I'm broke. I am. Wait, but in the in the sense that they, like, they were talking to this person, like, before. It's like, okay, we gonna go on a date by ourselves. Like, how? Or like that was like the I met you. No, 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 no. Talking on the phone, if I remember correctly, talking on the phone though in the first date. Mm-hmm. This is what was discussed. But I can't. I can't say, oh, on the third. I don't know. It depends on the relationship you have with the person. Yeah. How comfortable you guys are. But the earlier, the better is what I'm going to say. Okay. Don't wait till, like, y'all been there for two years and you tell the person. Because now. Like, oh, by you, the way. By the way, because now. Like what creates. $500,000. Right. <laughs> now, the issue you run into is, like, oh, you're a liar. Mm. You're not upfront. Yeah. I can't trust you because you waited this long to tell me this. You get what I'm saying? Like, you leave footholds for Satan now. Mm-hmm. Because it's like, oh, you keep a secret for this long? I can't trust you. Now you have issues in the relationship. Dang. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So the earlier, the better. Okay. And if, you know, and if it's the person is for you, even if you might run them off in the first, you know, have the conversation, if that's the person and that person's obedient, then he's going to come back. She's going to come back. Mm. You know, because give the person a chance to make a decision. Is this something I want to deal with? Mm-hmm. Don't surprise that's true. Don't surprise her. That or don't is, surprise that him. That is very true. Like that's I think that's another thing that's important with dating too. Is yeah. like when you're getting to know someone and like your your conversations are getting a little more deeper. Mm-hmm. You're getting into like traumas now. You're mm-hmm. getting into like family, um, like family dynamics. Mm-hmm. Give that person the grace to react. Right. <laughs> because like it's two different people coming together with two different lifestyles, yep. two different everything, two Baggages different, like, different baggage, all this stuff. Like you could have two bags, that person could have ten. Right. So it's like you have to give the cute person- bag lady over here. <laughs> bag lady, you gonna Don't hurt your back. <laughs> Carrying all them bags <laughs> like that. <laughs> And I said no, but no, are we not going to say her? Yeah, we ain't going to say that. She, but she didn't wish this, this ain't karaoke. Okay. But, <laughs> but oh, that yeah, part. Too. Okay. Yeah, but like you just have to give people grace to do that because it's like our relationship with Jesus. He gave us grace, you right. know, like, and right. we we had to accept that grace for ourselves too. Like, let's accept grace. To say that, hey, this happened in my life. I have to forgive myself for this. Right. This happened in my life. Jesus, forgive me, but I also have to work through forgiving myself too. Yeah. But like, people are just yeah. like, no, you just gotta be like this, and it's like, no, sweetie. Like, yeah, but we yeah. are human beings. No, that's okay. Stuff again. Like, we are not. We're not angels. If I'm an angel and you dated me. You're dating a ghost. This is not Casper. <laughs> so <laughs> it's not real, it's, guys. It's not real, guys. So I'm lying. Like, we have to like also give people the grace. And it is very hard. I'm saying this, it is easier said than done. Yeah. It really is. But like you just have to come to conclusions with that. If you have to step away for a little bit, okay. And the other person has to understand too. Hey, look, I need you some know, time. Like, 
reassure them like, hey, this is a lot, yeah. but I'm I'm coming back. It's just a lot. Yeah. I got to process this. Do you know when those conversations kind of come up with that grace is also needed? When you're talking to somebody, they, come, they become a believer or they are a believer and they can't even tell you about the past life. You'll say, oh, yeah, I have this many bodies. Or I used to do this. The body count Ooh. is a very <laughs> spicy conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Two questions. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Two questions. Yeah. Would you ever date a man with kids? Mm. Mm. That's not my. That's not my. Calling? I want to say my calling. That's not my. Um, that wouldn't be my first pick. Mm-hmm. But never say never. Especially the. I. I think the older we get, the more that's going to be, be reality. Difficult. Yeah. Yeah. And it's gonna be difficult to like not find a guy with kids. So I'm like, I'll never say never, but there has to be conversation. Like we gotta, I have to know the dynamic with you and your, your yeah, baby mama. I think that's what like makes or, it or ex-wife. Mm-hmm. Let's keep it real yeah, too, yeah. cause like you some that's another thing too. Like you could, I could end up dating someone who got divorced. Yeah. You know, so I have to know what that looks like. What, like, how is your relationship? How is your relationship with your children? Yeah. You know, like, are you providing for your kids? How much are you providing? Because then that's affecting my money. <laughs> because, yeah, if, yeah, because if we do end True. up getting serious, I get married. Yeah. So that's affecting my yeah, money. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> so it's like, that's a whole other topic in itself. Would I prefer it? Would I prefer them not to have kids? Yes. Mm-hmm. But am I going to say like, oh, like if this is someone that I'm like, oh, I'm going to end up with this person, then I'm like, Lord, help me, Jesus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, I didn't want this, but not my will, Lord. <laughs> Yours. So what is your cap in terms of kids? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> what is my cap? It'll probably be two. Okay. Yeah. So you come with four, five, six. I'll be like, <laughs> pick another man. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be like, sir. Not the messenger. I said I want to go on a date, not to daycare. Okay. <laughs> You. Nah, like mm. I two one is like okay. Two, two. I'm like all, all right. right. But three, I'm like that's ne- it. next caller. <laughs> next caller, please. Yeah. Ooh. Okay. So my second question. Maybe this is my last. I don't know. But my second question is <laughs> probably not. <laughs> my second question is. How many bodies would you take from a dude? Like, if a dude would say, oh, that's a wild question, right? Word of wrong, but how many, what would you consider, like, all right, I can't, because you have too many bodies, like. Dang, damn, Curtis, you got me thinking. <laughs> if a dude comes to you like, yo, so I'm 35 or 38, mm-hmm. and I've had 80 bodies. I would ask about no. I would actually obviously ask about like their sexual past. Right. That's like you have to talk about that. Right. And I'm a I'm a believer in like get tested. Yeah. Yeah. Come on now. Um. What you what does normal now? I mean I don't know what is normal. Girl, don't 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 even ask me. (laughs) Like what is normal? What What is normal? What is normal? Period. Like yeah. What is what is the word normal? Um. I think like if you had over like. Cause I'm like, when did you start? Right. That's that's why I give the age. Cause I'm that's like, like, what when is did, normal? Yeah. I mean, like I'm like, when did you start? Like if you started at like for a man too, you know they be out here swinging. Yeah, right? and 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 they be the ladies be catching it, but like, <laughs> but I'm like, when did you? I think that would be my question. Like when did you start? Yeah. 
and then if I want to follow up, I'll ask for the bodies. But if it's like, oh, I started at like, like 30. I don't even know when you started at, but I started at like 30. And like, I'm here, 28. I'm like 38. And I have like, yeah, like 50 bodies. I'm like, what, sir, like. What are we doing here? Like, were you not, t- like, I congratulate your endurance. But like, <laughs> what? Is, like, what is what? wrong with you? Like, is you have a problem. Here? Like, you know, That's like, wild, right? yeah, like, it's I mean, just, like, crazy. So, it, I think it would just depend on, like, when you started. But there's also things, too, like, oh, you shouldn't ask. Like, um, not, I not, disagree. not ask, like, about your sexual, like, if you had sex before or not. But, like, you shouldn't ask, oh, how many bodies you had. Who said that? Like, there's, like, a whole debate online. Like, Shut should you, do you ask? Do you ask. ask? If I'm going to, I don't care. I'm going to ask. Because if I am going to be, we taking this serious, mm-hmm. okay? And um, there's a future for us in terms of marriage. I need to see how many souls you collected. Yeah. Uh, hello, soul ties. If there is a prayer that we need to pray, if there's an attach, I mean, we don't know for sure until you see behaviors, mm-hmm. but people don't understand sex, sex is such a spiritual thing. It is soul ties that comes along with that. Mm-hmm. There's a reason why you keep picking the same girl, or keep the same man over and over again, because that spirit is still there. So and keep then what expectation, uh, expectation do you have of me? Right. You know, because it's like, there's some girls, right. they so have tr- high sex drive. There's some who have low sex drive. Right. There's some that's like, oh, I could go like five rounds. And it's like, there's something that's like, okay, I'm good. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, so what is the expectation with that? And that's why I feel like it's so important to talk about, talk about sex it, when you're dating. And like what you mean, I can't ask. How many yeah, bodies you got? Like man? it's it's a it's a real conversation that you have to have. Yeah, I just yeah, I definitely <laughs> disagree with the word talking about you cannot you shouldn't ask. So okay, you shouldn't ask. All right, so you married this girl. Come to find out because I'll give you one example. This girl I know in college, her our first semester she had twenty bodies. Mm. Yeah, I know she was collecting Pokemon cards. I don't know what the hell she was collecting, <laughs> but she <laughs> not. <laughs> but <laughs> <It's> like Thanos, <laughs> <laughs> just collecting rings. Okay, I'm just like, that's wild. If yeah. I was a dude, I need to know that. I'm not saying people don't deserve love and people don't change and God doesn't renew people. Yeah, but even with, but I need with to God know. and even with God renewing you, know me a like, renewed. <laughs> But yeah, <laughs> like yeah, but yeah, like it, you still have, cause I think with Christianity, right? You accept Jesus. There's a honeymoon phase, and then the honeymoon phase starts dying. But it's out. like a relationship. It, it is it's a literally relationship. Like a relationship. So it's like the honeymoon phase. Like I just want to live for the Lord, and, I'm and then temptation be, comes. And, and I'm was gonna like be her. celibate, and I'm never gonna have sex, and I had, you and know, you I had, yeah. And then how did you fall? How yeah, did you how fall? did it? How did, and then you. The honeymoon, fit. you come back to reality, you know, you get off the island and come back to reality, and it's like real life happens. Yeah. Because it's a, it's a sanctification thing. So if you're pulling stuff out, like other stuff are, while you're pulling, other stuff are going to come out too. Yeah. So it's like, you have to know yourself. And I think with that being said, like if you're dating, if you're dating with some, if you're married with somebody, like that's not just gonna disappear and go away. Yeah. Because like naturally, what about if you compare them to other some somebody else? No, for real. Like what about if you and your husband aren't compatible and you'd be like, oh well, this guy did this or this mm-hmm. guy did this, or I saw this on a porn site, you know, Which like if you haven't lie. had sex, like you, I saw this on porn, mm-hmm. and like this person did this or this girl did that or this yeah. girl she was open. And that's to a lot about porn. It creates a really false exactly. reality. Exactly, porn is porn is basically it's acting. It's acting. So you it know? creates this false reality. Oh, you're supposed to do it like this, and it's a, that's not even. Yeah, like it's like okay, yeah. but okay, that's great that she's flexible, but I can't even put my, like I'm not. <laughs> it creates a false reality. It, it creates a false, a false reality, reality, but like even that is a soul tie. If you never had sex, but you watch porn, that's a soul. You're you soul tie. You have a lot of bodies. You <laughs> you got a lot of bodies. And the, you, it's not. I know some them, people think that okay, they never. I don't know. You two don't block us, but if they never mm-hmm. like got penetrated or did the penetration but did oral they feel like that's not sex that's all part of sex i'm like it's called oral sex yeah like just because you call it head the streets call it head yeah it's still sex the the technical term of it is oral sex right so Mm -hmm. you can say oh i don't have any body because i 
your mouth does. Okay. <laughs> this is your teeth back to differ. <laughs> conversations are very important. I, I yeah. definitely disagree with whoever, uh, what the world, I don't know if the world is saying it's a new, I don't know. I definitely disagree. That needs to I be mean, a, the one world, for your health. The, how, how open the world is, like, anything goes. Yeah, anything goes. But I think for Christians, like, you had a life before you were Christian, yeah. <laughs> you know? Like, right. and some people, they, they didn't have, some people are virgins. That's great. But, like, there's some people who they've had sex before. Mm-hmm. Or, like you said, even worse, they've been raped before. So yeah. it's like they un- they had a body by force, not yeah. really by I wanted to do this. Right. So it's like in every situation, you just have to ask the Lord for grace. You have to um, kind of expect the person to react a certain way. If you hold it against them, that's wrong. Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you that that's really wrong. Like, because you, you you got past you as could well. yeah you so could you could take time to process it. Everyone process stuff different. Some people process it as soon as they get the news. Some people it takes them a minute. Yeah, that's fine. But if you holding it against them, like oh she's just a Jezebel, he's just a harlot and a whore. Like, like no, yeah. like you can't do that. We can do the same thing for you. Yeah, we could do and that. Jesus could do the same thing. Exactly. Like, so what? like you can't really hold it against them. Like oh this. That's that's why, like, with kids, I mean, that's another thing. Because it's like a, there's like a... Um, everybody got their purpose. Vibe. Yeah, but there's, a, there's some like... Some people can handle that. What do you say? Some people can handle that. They, some like, if people someone has have multiple kids, they, kids. They love kids, I don't care. Mm-hmm. Me, personally, that's one thing I was just like, I, yo, when I say, I was like, God, do not give me a man with a kid. If that's the case, just let, keep me single. I'm okay. Not because I don't like kids, I work with kids, it's not the issue. Mm-hmm. I didn't want to deal with the drama of the baby mother. Yeah. Whether it was the ex-wife or... But, the but then too, because then there's there's situations like that where the person was married. Or what about if they're a widower? Like their their spouse isn't here. I didn't want to... <laughs> I'm not saying for you. I'm just saying in general. But it doesn't have everybody have yeah. their preference. I know I... Because now, because in that situation, right? But in that situation, like, right, they would, they in that situation looking in I'm looking. Place. I have to deal with the, not all the kids are like that, but then you have the the kids who dislike you because mm-hmm. they feel like you're replacing your mother. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? Or replacing your father? So it's just like, just keep me single. Just make yeah. sure my, my pockets is fat and my closet is full. That's what, <laughs> just and I have a roof over my head, that, and I serve you for the rest of my life. But just you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But that was my preference. I did not, you know. And right now, like, I have a kid now, you know, is this, do I see it differently? No, it's your preference. If you know yeah. that's something you can, and that's something you can. Yeah. Point blank period. And yeah. if you prefer to just be single than be a stepmother or a stepfather, I'm not judging you for mm-hmm. that. That's your preference. Mm-hmm. You know, now if God calls you to be the stepmother to that child or stepfather to that child and you deny it, that's a different story. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, you guys, clearly, you can see that we could go on for many, many, we many can. more hours. This is good. But we ain't going to do that to y'all. <laughs> so, we are going to end this video here. Yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed this conversation. Mm-hmm. Let me know your thoughts. Like I said, don't be nasty. It is okay, <laughs> like don't. we said. Right. We all, it's okay to have opinions and disagree and agree, whatever. Yes. Um, but I would love to hear some of your comments, what you guys think, like you guys experience what Melissa was talking about in the dating world or even in the marriage world. Like, you know, yeah, I hope you guys enjoy it and I cannot wait to see y'all next week. All right. Have a blessed day. Bye. Bye.